So, it is currently after 3 o'clock in the morning, and I have I have to go and do physics in approximately four hours. But because going to sleep and moreover making wise and healthy decisions are apparently for sissies, I've decided that instead I'm going to sit here and play Hearthstone like some kind of asshole. And of course playing Hearthstone, you know what that means, playing a manly PMX, that's right. Need to inject a little bit of goddamn testosterone into the meta because it's been getting awfully Nancy filled lately. Anyway, decided to make a couple of changes because I'm a lazy, lazy asshole and take an inordinate amount of time to make new videos. And in between now and the time I last made a video, Black Rock Mountain came out and they added some new cards. Some good, some bad, some that I don't give a shit about. This is the wrong deck. That one. But one card in particular that I feel synergizes really well with Inner Rage and Warrior decks in general. You might have been seeing it, you know, roaming around quite a lot lately in the current meta. That's right, not this one. I'm talking about fucking Axe Fling, it's Chanabru. Holy shit. Look at this motherfucker. Look how red that card art is. If we consider the total proportion of red as opposed to the area of the card of the whole, it's probably in the region of about 70%. I mean, that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. You just don't get red like this elsewhere. So, of course, for that reason, it needs to go in the deck. But in addition to that, the Axe Flinger is a dude who throws axes at the other guy's face, right? And my deck is all about throwing axes at the other guy's face. Like, Fiery War Axe, that's an axe. Arcanide Reaper is an axe. Gore Howl is an axe. Uh, Ogre Warmall is not an axe. But, holy shit is it majestic. So, fuck yes. Anyway, need to put some axe flingers in the deck change I'm gonna make, I think I'm going to take out the frothing berserkers because as value as they are frothing berserkers benefit from minions doing damage to minions whereas this deck is about face doing damage to face so it doesn't make sense for both of those things to be in at the same time so get the fuck in there axe flingers holy shit is it about to get real all these axes flying all over the place. Okay, enough fucking around. Time to get this show on the road. Uh, as per usual, never ever 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 play casual mode. That's the secret to being successful in Hearthstone. Is that you have to be a goddamn badass and play ranked all the time. Because only fucking casuals play casual. And I ain't no fucking casual. So, let's ride. Uh, you might have noticed that the game music is not playing. There's a very good reason for that, because it's currently three of the fuck o'clock or some some shit like that, and this means that it is a perfectly appropriate time to listen to some goddamn bagpipe music. Because bag bagpipes are absolutely fucking majestic, and there are a few instruments more manly, so it's perfectly appropriate for the manly pemix. Also, uh, I am of the hope. They're listening to bagpipes whilst playing Hearthstone at 3 a.m. will help me not go mad while playing Hearthstone at 3 a.m. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Also, I don't make any promises about my ability to actually make wise decisions and, you know, viable plays throughout the course of this game. But fortunately, the only real strategy you need whilst playing Manly PMX is to just go all face all the time. So I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, playing against a shaman, it's good. It's a class I've never played against before with this deck, so we can demonstrate even further the overarching viability of how ridiculously good Manly Phoenix is. Starting hand, pretty much completely perfect. I'm gonna throw this fucker back though in the hopes of getting some some more weapons. So I can hit his face with my face even more. But if I play Death Bite, turn 4, 
upgrade turn 5. That means the death bite takes an extra turn to do its death rattle effect. And people only really play death rattle bite for the death rattle effect, so postponing it an extra turn is going to be some hardcore psyops and we're going to confuse the fuck out of this Unt character. Who is... Holy shit, do people still play this thing? Well, fuck. That's a bit depressing. I'm just gonna fucking hit it. I lied. All face, all the time. Yeah. You see, I jukes him. I masked over the haunted creeper. So he saw the red arrow aiming at the haunted creeper. So it made it look like I changed my mind at the last second. So he's gonna think that I'm some kind of noob who just goes all face all, all face all the time. When actually, I'm some kind of noob who goes all face all the time. Also, it was evidently the right play because if I had killed it, there would now be two spiders, and I would have taken six damage last turn instead of three. So, fuck you and your hippie judgmental ideals. Anyway, serious combos incoming next turn. All we need to do is clear all of this bullshit and then we'll have this game in the back. Okay. Oh, oh, Ogawomal. Fucking spectacular. You know what, I was gonna play the death part, but I think Ogawomal is even more value. Because then, I can upgrade it. Holy shit, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Goddamn 5-3 Ogawomal? That's 15 damage right there. And because Ogawomal does what the fuck it wants, it might just ignore these taunts and go straight face the whole time. So we effectively have 15 face damage in our hand. All we need to do is pull another 11 out from somewhere. But I don't think it'll be too different, too difficult, because I've got 16 in my hand. Anyway, let's ride. See what Ogre. Oh yeah, there we go. Right, Ogre one will know what the fuck is up. Five damage to his face. Never saw it coming. Also, maximum value out of a Dread Corsair. Five attack. 4 mana cost, minus 1 per attack of weapon. You ever seen a negative 1 cost trade force there, motherfucker? I didn't think so. Well, now you have. Go tell that to your grandchildren. Okay, so he's hitting my face. He appears to have board control. It could be a problem, but it's fine because I'm sure the Ogre Warmall will just decide what the fuck to do. Okay, it didn't go face that time, so obviously it was the correct play to clear the taunt and make an effort to regain board control. It won't be long now. Surely he's going to realize just how ridiculously manly this is and then probably just concede. Oh, that's not good. That is an awful lot of... Fuck you. Okay. So it turns out that board control is kind of important when you're at rank 20 and Chomp is still running bloodlust. But it doesn't matter, because even though we might have technically lost, we won in spirit, because the Ogre Warmall allowed us to bypass the taunt. So Ogre Warmall is effectively counter the mechanics of the game itself. The Ogre Warmall is counter Blizzard, and given enough time, Unt is probably going to realize this. He's going to realize just how magnificent the deck he played against was. And m by my reckoning, I'd say he's probably going to go and become a hermit. He's going to go live in the mountains somewhere and he's going to preach the majesty of man manly Pemex to any passersby who might be interested. So, due to the fact that we beat a mage and we beat a rogue, and we didn't beat the shaman. But we won against the Shaman in Spirit. I think we can categorically state that Manly p -Mix is the best deck ever made. And it just wouldn't be in the same place it is without this fucking bagpipe music. Holy shit, is it just. Anyway, I think it's approximately time for me to go the fuck to sleep. So, farewell to all of you.